there was a point actually in my life. Uh, okay, I'll just say it. <laughs> uh, when I thought I'm going to uh, to stop, I'm going to die. <laughs> okay, as simple as that. I was actually in foreign country. I was in Malaysia. I was a software developer. I was suffering with job because of my health. Yeah, I had very uh, unique problems with health. I went to the doctors, I spent all my salary for the doctors, but nobody could tell what was my problem, you know. And then I left out on the street because I couldn't pay for the rentals and stuff like that. So it was like a very tough moment of my life when I had to find myself. And I was like, what's the meaning of this life? What am I doing here? And that was the pivoting point of my life when I decided that for myself, I do have to do things that really matters. Probably that was a good thing that happened because it changed the way I am. My thinking changed, you know, I understood that the doctors could not help me, then I would just, you know, take care of myself. I started to eat properly. I did sport every day. I didn't have a place to live, so I just went to the office. <laughs> I was living in the office, you know, and because I was in the office like 24-7, I could do a lot of work and I was like, from the bad employee, I went to the best employees. <laughs> I started to self-develop. I met a lot of great people, you know, my communication skills improved. I was like, in the past I was just a nerd in front of the computer, but right now because these things happened slowly, I changed and, you know, life totally changed. But then I was like, still, I'm not doing something big, you know. So I resigned, I came back to Kazakhstan. Uh, I got offers from university to be a teacher and offer from a bank to be a software developer. And of course, banks offered me higher salaries, but then I decided to be a teacher. It was my inner passion to, you know, to be there and to follow my uh, instincts. I did succeed locally in university, but then I realized that in 21st century we were born in uh, such amazing era, you know, of digital technologies. If you have built a successful company which can help millions of people around the world, why should you limit yourself to certain specific locations? Right now in Kazakhstan, like we have 30 to 40 kids sitting in one classroom and only one teacher, which is physically unable to personalize his attention and give the best knowledge that he could actually, if it would do one-on-one -on -one teaching. Let's invite on the stage the next team, which is Okon. When I came back to Kazakhstan, I saw clearly three problems. Uh, first is lack of IT teachers, and the lack of IT specialists in the market, as well as the incompetent IT education programs in schools. The solution we came up with our team was the platform that can teach millions of people with no mind power. We provide out-of-the-box solution for schools, for, because we are B2B oriented uh, uh, company. If your school, we do provide automation, which will enable you to and do autom automated grading and save a lot of time for you, as well as you as a teacher will be able to monitor success of your students uh, and uh, look for the progress. Thank you. And the startup is Millennium Education Technologies. Oko. We did 
great job of presenting our project. I'm very happy that we have been selected for the next year because in, uh, next time in the semifinals we will truly be able to uh, show our potential, full potential. In, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, every day you, you, you face a lot of different problems you might fail, you know, everyone around you might not believe in you, but as long as you believe in yourself and you're persistent, you know, at a certain point you will be grateful because it happened. Why? Because most probably life gives you this problem so that you can learn to solve it.